Hi friends, welcome back to Edupedia World. Last lecture we discussed about uh, radioactivity and we saw that during radioactivity three different radiations are being emitted. Those were alpha particles, beta particles and gamma radiations. Today's lecture we will see the properties of the three different radiations and a comparison between them. So let's start with the discussion. Alpha particles is uh, represented by the symbol alpha, beta particles by the symbol beta and gamma particles as gamma. Okay. Now what alpha particle is, is basically a helium nucleus. Okay. So what is helium? Helium is He24. From this, if you remove two electrons, then what you will get is uh, He24 but with a 2 plus, isn't it? Because the two electrons are removed. Therefore, alpha particles are positively charged particles with uh, 2 plus charge and they are electron removed from helium nucleus. Now, beta particles are negatively charged particles. They are basically electrons which are very high energy electrons. So, there is no physical difference between a uh, electron and a beta particle. Beta particle is uh, electron. But the only difference is that beta particles are those electrons which are traveling at very very high speed. Okay? So, that gives you an idea about what a beta particle is. And gamma particle or gamma radiation, let's say radiation. Gamma radiations are high energy, very high energy electromagnetic radiation. If you remember uh, during our discussion about uh, light, the different ranges of electromagnetic radiations, there was gamma radiation at one of the extreme ends which had the minimum wavelength and which means it had maximum energy. It's the same gamma radiation. So gamma radiations are uncharged particles which are very high energy radiation. And all these three are emitted due to radioactivity. They might not be emitted together but uh, in different cases different things might be emitted. Normally what happens is uh, alpha emission goes together with a gamma radiation emission or a beta uh, particle radiation emission goes with a gamma radiation. Alpha and beta do not get emitted together. Okay, so this gives you the nature about the different particles. Now let us see the charge for the different particles. Obviously as we saw here that uh, alpha particle is helium nucleus that is helium atom with two electrons removed. Since two electrons are removed it gets a plus two charge. Okay plus two E means uh, plus two times 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb. Right? Beta particle on the other hand is uh, minus E. Since it is an uh, electron, its charge is minus 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb. And gamma radiation, since they are electromagnetic radiation, they not, do not have any charge. They are neutral. Now next, let us compare the mass of the three particles. Alpha particle being helium nucleus. So, what will it have? It will have two proton and two 
neutron. Now we know that the mass of proton and neutron are almost similar that is each of them is 1.67 into 10 power minus 27 kg. Right. Therefore the mass of alpha particle will be 4 times the mass of a proton or 4 times the mass of a neutron and that will be 4 times this mass. So it will be in the order of 6 point uh, 5 into 10 power minus 27 kg roughly. Whereas beta particles being electrons will have a mass of 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. Therefore what we see here is that the alpha particle are much more heavier than the beta particle. Now though the charge of the alpha particle is more than the beta particle in magnitude but the mass of alpha particle is also more than much much more than that of beta particle thereby the thing which we saw in the last lecture that alpha particle deviates less than beta particle this is exactly the reason because its mass to charge ratio is much higher for alpha particle than for beta particle therefore since the mass is more it deviates less Gamma radiations are uh, electromagnetic radiations, so they have zero rest mass. They do not have mass. They are photons. Next, let us see the wavelength nature above of them. Alpha and beta are particles. They are not waves. Since they are not waves, they have uh, wavelength is not defined for them. Though we can actually define wavelength in the terms of a de-Bogley wavelength but we will not go into details about them. Uh, we will not take into account the wavelength of alpha and beta particles. They do not have a wavelength. Whereas gamma particles we know are the smallest wavelength radiation or the maximum energy radiation. It is found that the wavelength of gamma radiations are in the order of 10 to the power minus 13 meter or 10 to the power minus 3 angstrom that is very very small radiation wavelength of radiation fine then next let's see what is the speed comparison between the three particles or three radiations speed for the alpha particle as you know that alpha particle is the heaviest among all the three therefore it's difficult for the alpha particle to attain very very high speed. Even at relatively lower speed due to its mass it has a lot of energy. What is observed in practice is that alpha particles move at around 10 to the power 7 meter per second. Just for reference you should know that the speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So this is like uh, roughly 3 to 5 percent the speed of light, the speed of the alpha particles. That in itself is quite high. Beta particles on the other hand being very light particles as we can see here it's 10 power minus 31 kg. They have a relatively higher speed than the alpha particles. Normally they move around 90 percent the speed of light that is they move in the order of order of 10 to the power 8 meter per second. And finally the gamma radiations are electromagnetic radiation therefore they move in the, at the speed of light that is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second in vacuum. Okay. Continuing from here further let's see now let's see some of the physical manifestation of the particles and the radiation. Let me rectify it. This is uh, gamma radiation. So what is the effect of electric and magnetic field on the three particles and radiation? This is uh, the discussion which we already had in the previous lecture. What we saw 
is that the alpha particles are positively charged particles. So they behave in the electric field as if as any positive charged particle would behave. That is, it uh, moves towards the negative terminal of the uh, electric field. That is, it moves towards negative potential. It uh, moves in the direction in which it, a positive uh, charged particle is supposed in a magnetic field. But a catch was there which was that the deviation of the alpha particle is less than that of the beta particle and we discussed in the previous slide why is it so. Beta particles on the other hand the negatively charged particles move in the opposite direction that is they are attracted towards the positive terminal of a battery or of an electric field and they move in the direction in the magnetic field which is supposed to be for a negative particle. Also since the beta particles are quite light particles they deviate much more than alpha particles and as we have already seen that uh, the deviation for the beta particle is opposite to that of the alpha particle because its charge is opposite. Finally the gamma radiations being radiation that means being uncharged there is no deviation in either magnetic field or electric field. Now let's see what is the ionizing power of the three particles and radiation. The ionizing power of alpha particle is the largest. Why so? Because alpha particles carry a huge amount of energy with it. Though the speed of alpha particle is the least, they have a large mass and uh, that manifests itself as a high ionizing power. The beta particles have lesser ionizing power than the alpha particles and uh, gamma radiations have the least ionizing power. Okay, And uh, if you roughly try to estimate what is the ratio of the ionizing power, if this is 10 to the power 4, the ionizing power of alpha particles then this is roughly 10 power 2 and for the gamma radiations is 1. So basically beta particles is 100 fold more, 100 times more powerful in ionizing than gamma radiations and alpha particles is 100 times more powerful ionizing uh, characteristic than the beta particles. Then now let's see what is the penetrating power or the stopping distance for the three particles. What this means is how much does the particles move before they are stopped by any material might be in the air or any different material in which we are observing. So what is observed is that alpha particles has the least ionizing uh, penetration power beta particles have intermediate penetration power, gamma radiations have maximum penetration power. For comparison's sake, alpha particles move a few centimeters in the air. Beta particles a few meters in the air, whereas uh, gamma radiations several hundred meters in air. Now if you try to think why is it so? One of the main reason is the mass they are carrying. Alpha particles being very heavy particles, they are unable to pen penetrate to a large distance. Their stopping distance is less. Beta particles intermediate mass, intermediate distance. Gamma radiations zero rest mass, maximum distance. Okay. Now, what is the biological damage? What is the effect on human body due to the particles? As we have seen, the penetration power is least for the alpha particles, which means that the alpha particles, if imparted on a human body, will penetrate the minimum inside the body. Therefore, the damage to the cells and tissues caused by the alpha particle is less. That does not mean that alpha particles do not cause damage. They do cause damage, a lot of damage, but comparatively less than beta and gamma radiation. Beta red particles 
since they have intermediate stopping power they produce intermediate damage to the biological tissues more damage than alpha particles less damage than gamma radiation finally gamma radiations are very very high energy radiations they penetrate they uh, practically move through your throughout your body it can enter from one end of your body and pass through the other end so they are really bad when exposed to a human body or can cause extensive damage to cells tissues and uh, the human organs therefore extra care needs to be taken in order to avoid gamma radiation exposure now this is one of the reason that biological damage is one of the reason that any radioactive material needs to be handled with extra precaution normally what is done is radioactive materials are kept in lead containers lead containers uh, provide good stopping power the stopping distance is much less inside the lead containers and they practically stop all the radiations from getting out in the environment finally these were the comparisons where there were differences between alpha beta and gamma radiations there are some similarities also like all the three alpha beta and gamma radiations affect the photographic paint also all the three particles causes fluorescence on striking a fluorescent material all the three are produced by radioactive materials all of them cause biological damage so these are some of the points which are common to them and uh, we already discussed some of the points which are unique to each of them okay so today's discussion we saw the different properties of alpha beta and gamma radiations next class we will see how alpha beta and gamma radiations are produced the exact chemical reaction which is uh, rather nuclear reaction not chemical reaction the nuclear reaction which is going into creation of alpha beta and gamma radiation what are the changes taking place in the nucleus so till the next class have a great day goodbye